Hey, hey, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Post and Courier's first virtual event, and happy National Guacamole Day. Yeah. yeah so this is going to be a, a series of events. Go to postandcourier.com forward slash virtual events to see our lineup. But I'm very happy tonight to be here with Morgan Hurley. He is the marketing and beverage director for Coastal Mex One Coastal Cantina. <laughs> and so we're here. And uh, so Morgan is actually the winner of the 2017 Charleston's Margarita of the Year competition. Really yeah. cool. And has since he's taken this art into a whole different direction. So we appreciate everybody joining us tonight. We have a lot of questions. Uh, we're going to be fielding these questions as we go, but we're going to make more of a conversation on this. I'm excited to try your margarita, yeah. especially excited about the guacamole. But uh, just real quick, so for those who haven't been to Mex One, tell us a little bit about what you do, Mex One Coastal Cantina, and how you guys came about. Yeah, so we're Mex One Coastal Cantina. Uh, started here in about 2013. Um, we're kind of a Southern California take on fish tacos. So uh, great fish tacos, rice bowls, quesadillas, um, also some, some phenomenal uh, cocktails, some margaritas, some great draft beer, craft beer. Um, yeah, kind of a surfing sort of vibe. Uh, okay. We had a great you know, fan base in the very beginning uh, that allowed us to grow to our second location on Sullivan's Island, uh, which I'm sure a lot of you all have been spot. to. And then we also opened up our third location in Mount Pleasant out of the Park West neighborhood oh, yeah, as well. Good growth so, area. Yeah, absolutely. So you guys have lots of tequilas. You have lots of great fruit. So what is the passion about tequila? What got you in tequila? So, you know, when we started to come up with this concept, um, we knew tequila was going to be the base spirit. Once I started diving into the history, I just really fell in love with it. Uh, we eventually did multiple trips down to Mexico to buy our own barrels of tequila. So actually, the bar that you guys see, the barrels that are underneath us, Very cool. actually held our tequila that we have in these bottles and stuff like that. So it was a really cool experience and to see the passion that these distillers bring, the farmers bring every single day, you know, it's just, it's, it's impossible not to fall in right. love with it. I love tequila. I like yeah. tequila anyway. So I know there are some questions about different types of tequila. So margaritas go different ways. And as a tequila aficionado, you know, when you, if I'm going to the store and I want to buy a bottle of tequila, what am I looking for? Yeah. Great question. So Number one thing you're looking for is 100% agave tequila on the bottle. Agave. If it says gold or mixo, or if it just doesn't say that at all, just put it back on the shelf. A good rule of thumb is you're looking for about $15 to $20 kind of minimum. Anything kind of below that is probably going to be a poor tequila. And what that means is that a lot of the other ingredients in the bottle is the stuff that gives you that hangover the next day. So you talk so about gold, your, that different yeah. brownish type tequila. Exactly. So at Mex One, we only use 100% agave tequila, even in our house margaritas. A lot of our competitors use that kind of mixo, that gold tequila, um, to save money on cost. We like to use 100% agave from the very beginning. So okay. explain a little bit about what agave is for those who don't know what goes into tequila or how tequila is made. Yeah, so tequila is essentially three ingredients. It's agave, water, and yeast. That's all it takes to make um, tequila. It takes about six to eight years for an agave to get to full maturity. Um, and then a couple processes from there to actually make your tequila. Um, it's a really unique spirit um, and it's just absolutely fabulous. Personally, I love Blanco tequilas, but okay. you have the age variations as well, which is Reposado, and Añejo, Extra Añejo, and even your Mezcals and stuff like that. Too. Excellent. Yeah, that was actually a question that came in. So maybe explain a little bit about those differences if you don't Yeah, mind. so um, Blanco tequilas are pure right out of the still. So they have a little bit more strength to them, um, but you get the pure nature of the spirit. Um, they work great in citrus cocktails or sparkling cocktails. Okay. Reposado is lightly aged. They work perfect in margaritas. So what we're going to be doing today. Excellent. And Yeos and Action Yeos are essentially aged even longer. So they take on some of the bourbon characteristics, a little bit of vanilla notes and those sort of things. If you're a bourbon drinker, you're going to love an Añejo or an Action Yeho. If you like bourbon, get an Añejo or an Action Yeho. It works perfect. Mezcal, it's about the cooking method and the actual agave is used. Mezcals are a little bit smokier, so they're perfect for scotch drinkers. Uh, they make great margaritas, but if you don't really like that smokiness, then you may not. You may want to go back to like an Añejo. Yeah, right on. So I know you're going to answer a lot of these questions as you're making the margarita. And we have a lot yeah. of our folks that are joining us today have the ingredients. We appreciate you going out and getting the ingredients. And so you can join along with Morgan as he goes ahead and makes up the margarita. So I'm anxious yeah. to try one. So our first cocktail we're going to making is the El Jefe Margarita. So, um, you know, a couple tools that I always like to have as a home bartender. I always have a shaker and tin. Um, this is something that makes a really quick cocktail for you. Um, the other thing is a good jigger. Um, this one right here has a one and a half all the way down to a quarter ounce. You can use tablespoons in place of it, but it's something good to have. And then a juicer. This is a must in my house. So to start off, we've got a, a quarter ounce of tequila. 
if you were to do this as tablespoons, this would be about a half a tablespoon of agave nectar. So the agave nectar gives it what that that sweet flavor, right? So essentially, what they're doing is when they're when they cook the agave, they pull, they get that caramelized sugar and bottle it instead of making it tequila. Gotcha. So that's basically what that is. Um, next, we're shooting for a half ounce of lime juice. A half ounce is going to be about um, a half a lime. So you can squeeze it right into here if you like, right into the jigger if you like, or you could just kind of go right into the glass. The biggest thing I like to think about when I make cocktails um, and food in general is that I always go by taste. So if it tastes a little salty, a little too citrusy, just add a little bit more back in. Um, so after I've got a half ounce of lime juice, next we're going Cointreau. I've got about one ounce of Cointreau. So Cointreau is a, essentially an orange liqueur. This is a fun one that you could sub out um, Grand Marnier. I love myself some Grand Marnier. Mm -hmm. Um, dry curacao, the Pierre Ferrand makes another one. So you can kind of sub in some different ingredients. This is also a great way to sub in different other liqueurs as well if you wanted to kind of try something different. Which then, one is that again? Uh, that's the Cointreau. Oh, this one. Oh, so last but not least, this is Herradura. The this tequila. is our double barrel Reposado. Um, so this is actually the barrel underneath us on that this side, side right there. We're on our fourth barrel right now of tequila with these guys. It's about 240 uh, bottles of barrel that we get. So how did y'all get into that to be able to get them to make your tequila? You know, it? I've heard that from, so what they do essentially they age it in one single barrel just for us. Um, so it's a very unique product just to us. Um, it's a, it's a, it was a fun one to get down there and get to do the experience. We've done a couple of Patron barrels. We've done a Roca Patron barrel, a Casa Doble, a G4, and uh, El Tesoro as well. Okay, so a lot. It's, it's been a fun. So we kind of come in the next one, we're happy hour, and get a margarita. You can request that, right? Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, this is the El Jefe that we're making. This is what we serve every single day. So next, we have some ice going in. So quick pro tip: whenever you're making cocktails at home, always do the ice the very last. Because if you're entertaining and you forget something or you need to go back to the water down, you need to go bit, get something, yeah. it's going to water down. As soon as you put ingredients it. in I've there, it. it starts watering down. So I like to make everything dry first and then pour right into the shaker. Give that a quick shake. You're only shooting for about 10 or 15 seconds of shaking. Essentially, what you're doing is just watering down the cocktail just a bit. And then next, we're going to add um, our... Uh, salt on the glass. I like to do about half uh, salt. So what you do is you take the lime, cut it in a, kind of in a triangle shape and make a little slit down the middle and just rim the edge of the glass. This is the best way to get it to stick. You can use salt or sugar. It's up to your preference. Um, personally, I prefer salt. I just like that little bit of balance that you get with the cocktail. Um, the salt kind of cuts that sweet too. You put the sugar on Exactly. Yeah, sweet. yeah. But if you like overly, if you like sweet cocktails in general, then Going with a little bit of um, sugar isn't a bad thing either. So uh, a couple of questions that came in. So what if I was going to make a skinny margarita? So what can skinny I, what can I yeah, how can I yeah. change it up a little bit? So we'll go as I'm making the cocktail, I'll kind of, kind of talk through that. So if you're going to make a skinny, there's two different ways you can approach it. Either you can make this very similar cocktail and just cut it with a little bit of soda water. Personally, the way that I prefer to do it. You're only using about a quarter ounce of agave nectar, so there isn't a ton of calories in that. Really, the calories come in the actual spirits themselves, um, unless you're doing like a pre-batch mix or something like that. Um, but if not, another option is to get something like monk fruit or stevia or something like that and make a simple syrup. Okay. So if you're going to do that, what I would suggest is go for about a one-to-one -one ratio of water to sugar. So like monk fruit or stevia or something along those lines. Gotcha. Looking good. Looking good. A couple other questions it? here. So what if I wanted to make a margarita frozen? Do I follow the same steps and just pop it in a blender? Or are there different steps and... and um, you're gonna follow Radius. the same steps, add ice, just add a little bit. Another chip tip that I saw that you can actually do is make the actual margarita dry like this and then throw it in your freezer okay. in oh, ice yeah. cube trays. Freeze it or get it as close to frozen as possible and then try and blend it up. That'll help prevent it from getting too watered down. Um, or you can just add a little bit of ice, but that's really the best bet to start by freezing, freezing it, it first, first it. and then throw it in a little bit of ice to get it to the consistency okay, cool, you're looking for. Cool. Um, so another question that came in, and these look, we can't wait to jump into this one, but 
the pros and cons of a pre-made margarita mix. Yeah, absolutely. So um, if you're local here, you can just buy margarita mix from us. Yo, so you guys sell margarita yeah, mix here. Yeah, you there can you buy go. There from you all go. three locations. Um, if not, I like to say if you're shooting for margarita mix, if you're not wanting to go through this whole process, you're entertaining. What I would suggest is trying like a fresh fruit and soda water concept, like just uh, soda water and lime or soda water and grapefruit. Yep. If you're looking to go a little bit further, um, anything refrigerated. So if you're going to like a Whole Foods or an Earth Fair, look for refrigerated mixes. Okay. The shelf stable stuff, you just really chalk up the um, into the um, preservatives and all that sort of stuff. So I try and avoid that as much as possible. Um, so the recipe that I have made for y'all or given to y'all today, uh, I'm going to be providing that in the email follow okay, up great. after this. But then as well, I've got a batch recipe as well. So I've got this scaled to about for 10 people, something like that. So it'll be easier to make it for a lot of people. So I've got that coming to you guys as well. And if I was, if I didn't have time to make it, I had a dinner party coming up and some, you know, some friends coming over. I want to get a batch. Do you just get it in by the gallon here or do you sell it by? Uh, by the court. By the court? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, this looks really good. So what about fruits? So I know that some folks put different fruits in their margaritas, like maybe a pineapple juice or maybe a, yep. yeah, we talked about um, grapefruit juice as well. Yeah, blood orange is another great one that works really, really well. Um, I, you know, I'm a huge fan of it. What I would do is just sub in about a half ounce to an ounce at a ton. Just see what type of flavor profile that brings. Another fun one you could do is taking things like strawberries or if you like something spicy like jalapenos, um, put it in the tequila a couple days in advance. Anything that's fruit-based, I would let it sit for two, three days. Let it Anything that's spicy, it. let it go for only about 24 hours tops. Because okay. um, the spice will really accentuate really quickly. Um, but those are kind of the best bets. If not, you can do something as simple as like muddling a couple of strawberries in the base of your tin before you add the ingredients and shake and strain. Gotcha. Um, biggest thing with things like watermelon or anything that provides a lot to do just a little bit at first and just see where you kind of go from cool. there. Cool. Um, another question that came in. So if I don't like tequila, but I like a margarita flavor, are there any other spirits, any other alcohols I can use to make a margarita? So the benefit of like cocktails like this is that once you really get down the balance of citrus to sweetener then the limits are open right there you know essentially a whiskey sour is margarita but made with whiskey gotcha. instead yep. you know a lot of cocktails once you sub out the kind of the base spirit the name changes slightly from like a negroni to a boulevardier gin versus bourbon um so you can really use any other spirit out there um as long as you get this balance of acidity and um agave nectar and typically with things that are a little bit thicker, like honeys or agave nectar, I like to shoot for two parts citrus to one part um, agave nectar. If it's thinner, like a simple syrup, then a one-to-one -one ratio okay. is what you're shooting for. Good stuff. Like I said, the easy part is you can always just go back and just add a little bit more of the citrus or a little bit sweeter to taste your palate. Excellent. I know we're talking through this pretty quick, and uh, this is a lot of great stuff. I'm learning a lot. So if you have any questions, please send them over. We'd be happy to ask you. That's happy to answer them for you, but I'd like to take a taste. Can we take right, a taste? Let's do it, man. Yeah, Cheers. Man. So you didn't put a lime. I'm squeezing a lime. You, you're, you're... I don't personally do the lime because I joke. I say that our margaritas are don't perfect the way they are. So I don't think I have we need them anymore. Go yeah, I know. I agree. It's, Cheers. It's, yeah, you Cheers, go for dude. it. Cheers. Hope everyone's having one with us right now. Yeah. Mm. Very good. Very good. This is the best part of the job. Yeah. I got That's part of my job right now, too. Yeah, exactly. I love this. This is, this is fun, man. I could, I could talk tequila all day long, so... Um, so how did you get into tequilas? Like, where do where's your, your background on this? So it came from Mex One, and it really just came from I wanted, I'm an ever learner. I just always need to know what's the best out there. And so once I started to really dive into it and dive into the spirits and how it kind of worked, especially when I went down there, once you go down to Mexico and start reading some of the literature, literature around that, you kind of can't go backwards. You kind of have to go for the best. Um, top three tequilas right now, I'll tell you all. So Write it down. My favorite right now is G4 tequila. Um, got it in Mexico a few years back. Fell in love with it. Reached out to the reached out to them on Instagram to ask him how I could bring it into South Carolina because it wasn't here yet. Uh, got in touch with the importer. Spent about a year working with distributors here in Charleston. We That's finally good. got it in last year. Um, so G4 is one of my favorites. Fortaleza is another one. You can get it just about any liquor store. Um, arguably the most authentic way tequila has ever been made. Um, it's been around for, it's only been around for about 20 years, but the family has been making tequila for 150 plus. It was originally the Salsa family. Um, once they sold off, he kind of did his own thing and used the family's 
basically a museum. So it's if you want to cool. taste what tequila tastes like a hundred years ago, Port of Lace is a great one. Um, yes. Yeah, so we had a question oh, that came yeah. up. So came someone up. quantities of ingredients. The quantities so, of ingredients. Um, agave nectar is a quarter ounce, 0.25 ounces, or half a tablespoon. Um, lime juice is a half ounce or half lime or one tablespoon. Uh, Cointreau is one ounce or two tablespoons. And then the Caradura double barrel reposado or any great reposado tequila, 100% uh, agave, is one and a half ounces or three tablespoons. I use that because a lot of people have measuring spoons. Not a lot of people have a, you know, particular jigger like yeah, that. Yeah, and I think so. I see people that don't use the jiggers just kind of pour the tequila in there and you get knocked out after a while on those. That's the way I make my margaritas, <laughs> uh, just saying. So um, as far as the value, like if I'm going to the, to, to the liquor store and I want to buy tequila, I want to do this, what do you recommend as far as a good value, good tequila, 100% agave, of course? Yep. That... Um, one of my favorites, what we use here is Luna Zul um, tequila. It's Luna, a, Zul. Luna Zul. It's a great tequila for the price point. Uh, it's what we use in our house margarita as well as all of our infusions. Kind of separates us from our competitors that we use 100% agave tequila, where a lot of our competitors use Mixto, which is that the kind of the ones that give you the hangover. Um, so we start there. You know, another one, obviously, Espalone. I think everybody recognizes yep. that brand. That's a great one. Milagro is another kind of value brand as well. But uh, Luna Zul all day long. I would okay. Say. So if I'm coming in at Max One, I mean, I know you have so many different types of margaritas. What's the go-to? What do you what do y'all sell the most of here? Though? Man, uh, our infused margaritas. So we take things like strawberry, cucumber, pineapple, habanero, um, pineapple. Those are some of our top favorites. I would say the pineapple habanero is probably my go-to one. Um, but these things like the El Jefe, the Casa Fuerte, those kind of more classic margaritas are also gotcha. really good as well. Yeah, I, lo I love those, the spicy uh, pineapple ones. Those are yeah, really good. pineapple habanero. Yeah, yeah that one's a good so one. So these are, these are great. Hope everyone's um, drinking along with us. But as we know, today is National Guacamole Day. So we're going to have another cheers. And then as we're sipping along, Morgan's going to get into making the perfect guacamole. I'm super excited about this. Yeah. You ready for this? Yes, yeah, so we got to switch right. places, I believe. Switch place, do a little, Let me grab a little a... shimmy. Lime, let's scoot do 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 do. over this way. Right. All right. So, perfect guacamole. One thing that get out of your way. I will say is that with limes, I don't know if I mentioned this, but with limes, you want to get them to room temperature. You don't really want them to be cold. Um, just because you get a little bit more juice out of them, you get a little more forgiveness when, out When of you're them. looking at that lime, yeah, this is what I've always confused me is what's a, what's a good ripe lime when I'm in the grocery store? Yeah, looking for refrigerated. When you get home, I just leave them on the shelf all the time. So, uh, talking uh, National Guacamole Day, right? We've got so, National Guacamole Day. Avocados right here. Um, avocados. So this is one when you're looking at the grocery store. You want to look for one that's just slightly giving. You don't want it to be too hard. You also don't want it to be really soft, almost like airy, like it's got something behind it um, that's really giving. Uh, uh, one tell that you can give is that the little stem on there, it'll pull off pretty easily, let okay. you know that it's ripe. Um, once an avocado, actually, if an avocado is too green, throw it in a paper bag for about 24 oh, to 36 good, hours. Kind of enhance the ripening process. It'll kind of get it a little bit faster. If you have, I buy four to six at a time, and if they're all ripe at the same time, I'll throw some in the refrigerator, and they'll last for a little bit longer. Okay. Um, Natalie Dupree actually wrote a great article right. in the Post and Courier recently, um, and she dives into even more detail on it um, as far as freezing them is concerned or anything like that. So um, great article. I definitely suggest you uh, checking it out. So um, next we'll go into making guacamole. So uh, the one we're shooting for is about for about two to three people. Um, when you go into cutting the avocado, don't use an overly sharp knife. Also, don't use a really pointy knife or anything like that. Go with something that's kind of a flatter blade. The biggest thing is you have, you can pretty easily cut yourself with these. So, you know, go slow, go methodical. Um, make sure you're kind of looking at what you're doing. How far in do you go when you're cutting? Cut all the way down I'll to the pit? go right into the pit. Right into, yeah, the pit. right into the pit. And then spin it. So there's two different ways you can approach it from here. You can either squeeze it right in, or you can do, you can like cut into it for slices like this and then use a spoon to scoop it out or just kind of squeeze it right in there. So you're making enough guacamole you said for about three to four people? Yeah, so well, you depends. I could eat about yeah, I was gonna say, one I or two avocados same. myself personally. So it kind of depends on the fan base and everything like that. Um, you can also, when you're taking the pit out, you can use the knife. This is where a lot of people actually cut themselves. The other option is just to use a spoon and scoop it out. 
Um, I've done this enough times, so I'm pretty good. You can also just squeeze the avocado out. Since it is such a lighter texture, it's pretty easy to just squeeze it out. Um, so you can we'll, actually take that pit and put it in water, can't you? And it'll start to technically put, you start grow to root another out. tree. Yeah, if you if you wanted to. Um, as far as the ripeness is concerned of avocados, you know, like I said, you're looking for it to have a little bit of give to it. But if it's a little bit harder, if you find one that's not harder, but if it's if it's really perfectly green, this is an easiest way. Is, it's actually scoop it out first and then slice it. Um, that way you can get those kind of perfect slices when you're serving it. So when you're at the grocery store and you're looking for that avocado and you're in the, you know, the produce section and there's mounds and mounds of avocados there, I, mean, what are you, I know you're looking for the, the, the top part to be off, but really, any, anything else you're looking for? If it's too hard, just bring it home and... Yeah, if you've got some time looking for yeah. the, you know, I kind of plan it out. If I know I'm not going to need it for a couple of days and I'll get a really hard one yeah. just because I know that I've got a couple of days to get it to where I need to be. Um, or if they're all if they're all overly ripe, if they all feel like they're very squishy and stuff like that, you're probably not going to make a good guacamole. So if it feels really squishy and just really overdone that brown, you don't want it to have too much brown. Grab this brown. Sorry. Um, you don't want it to have too much brown. The more brown, it's just going to it's not going to taste as fresh. It's kind of like bananas. Like if you see a really brown banana, it's just not the best to use right. or to eat. So you're kind of looking for that for the most part. All right, so we threw the avocado, and I got a bunch of other ingredients there. Yeah, so I'll kind of talk through it a little bit. Um, you know, in my opinion, obviously you have to have lime juice in there to kind of add that acidity. Um, some salt, pepper, uh, cumin, and granulated garlic are keys that we use. And I've got some extras here. So cilantro is a great one if you like cilantro, not a lot of people do. And then onion, tomato, and jalapeno. I'll kind of go into those in a little bit. So. You know, what I like to say is that when you're approaching guacamole, it's kind of hard to go based off of a very strict recipe because avocados come in different sizes. Some are small, some are medium, some are really big. Same thing with lime. Some can be very juicy. Some can be really dried up. Just kind of depends on the season. So what I like to shoot for is half of a lime per two avocados. And just once you actually mix it, taste it. If it doesn't have that lime bite to it, then you can just add a little bit more so, or use some from your margarita. So one you half to. lime per two. One half powder. lime per two. Um, next, we're gonna shoot for about a quarter teaspoon of the salt, pepper, cumin, and granulated garlic. Um, again, this is something up to personal preference. I think you could probably go a little bit heavier on the salt. I, I think salt is always a good thing to have. And then we got a quarter teaspoon of the pepper, quarter teaspoon of cumin. Mm. Cumin's just gonna give it that kind of authentic Mexican flavor going in there. And then, I mean, everybody loves garlic. So the garlic's great. Can't um, have enough garlic for me. Cannot have enough garlic. I totally agree. Um, from here, like I said, I like to add cilantro as well. And you're really going for a pinch. If you're going to be measuring it, I would say you're shooting for about a half a tablespoon um, or more, depending on how much you like. So as far as mixing it up, right? So um, you can use, you know, if you're doing a lot, you can do like a potato masher if you're making for a big group. Um, that's a little much for what we've got here. You can also use like a muddler um, or just something as simple as a fork. It's, you know, really easy to mash. So you're just going to kind of start working the, the, the avocado, just kind of mashing it in to get it to the consistency that you want. And once you kind of start mixing it in, it'll start to just really come together. The biggest thing is that you never want to add, if you are going to add, um, the jalapenos or the onion or the tomato you never want to add it into this process because the more that you mash the onion and the tomato especially the onion the more you kind of let out those bitter oils you know i mean think right. about when you're cutting an, an onion like how it stings yep. your eyes and everything like that you're going to kind of do the same thing so wait till you're about ready to just fold it in at the end right exactly so you're just going to fold it in so you can see just using a fork i really got it to a good consistency that i like I've mixed it around a good bit. Um, and that's personal here, preference right there as well, right? I was gonna right? say, chunkiness or not, yeah. it's all up to how, how chunky that you like it. Um, I'm gonna add just a little bit of onion, a little bit of tomato. Um, we don't typically do tomato in our recipe, but I like a little bit of tomato in mine, so I'm gonna add a little bit. And then I like just a little bit of um, jalapeno as well for spice. Once again, this is up to personal preference, probably 
a half teaspoon or so. So I did, we did have one question that came in. It's kind of funny, like you might have a good answer for this, but what is one of the strangest things that in your experience <laughs> that you've seen people actually put in to guacamole? Yeah, so when we were in Mexico, um, the fir very first time we went down, they put um, chapulines in. Chapulines. Chapulines. So dried grasshoppers ah. that topped on top of the uh, Do you the have guacamole. any in-house that we can try? Uh, uh, no, not, <laughs> not quite yet. I don't know if that's legal in the United States. Maybe it is. I don't know. Um, no, it was good. It was a texture thing for me personally, but it did have a you know nice flavor to it, I guess. They also gave us that with our tequila shots. So okay. that was kind of interesting. Let me grab some chips for yep. us to try this. Oh, I get to try it. So another question just came in from our audience. How far in advance do you prep your guacamole before you serve? Great question. So um, really, you don't want to do it more than 24 hours in advance. Um, you can shoot same day, morning of. Um, I, I know this is a question we saw coming in was, how do you keep it an avocado or the guacamole from going brown? Um, so that's really the biggest thing. So when you get the, the guacamole, done, put it in a shallow, this is too big of a container, put it in a shallower container, get some saran wrap and completely level it flat. So get it to where it's completely flat, saran wrap on top and push all of that air out. Okay. Um, when you're ready to serve, pull it, pull off that little lid and then just scrape off the very top layer because the top layer will get a touch brown, brown, but it won't affect the flavor. Anything over that 24 to 36 hours, the lime really starts to break down, the onion starts to break down. It just takes, it, it does too much. So that's really like the key for us. So I know that, here, let's, yeah, let's try, let's try this. And then we, gotta, we gotta get in here really quick. Get some of this wow the audience. Hopefully you guys made it live with us, right? Yeah. Is there a rule for double dipping? Don't do it. Right, yeah. it. Um, so that was delicious. I mm. need that is, that, is that, is that, that's the next one. Coastal Cantina guacamole right Give there. Give or take. Okay. Give or take. Gotcha. I, I gave you guys enough. <laughs> so another question that came in, it's actually a pretty interesting question. Uh, what other ingredients do you see people utilizing avocados for? What are the recipes that avocados can be so you know versatile and diverse? Yeah, so if you mm. bought a bunch of avocados for mix or anything like that, um, one thing is simple that everybody knows about right now is avocado toast. So taking um, fresh toast uh, out of the toaster, little avocado, little salt, a little olive oil, just to kind of complement the fattiness, mm -hmm. and a little chili pepper. So crushed chili pepper is a great one, great for breakfast. Um, another one that I like to do is just straight avocado, yeah, sliced one. with a little bit of tagine. Tagine you can find in the international aisle of most grocery stores. It's kind of like a chili spice um, that just goes that and eggs, like fried eggs with just sliced avocado and tagine on top is phenomenal. Um, and then lastly, in a smoothie. So a lot of people put avocado in a smoothie. Yeah, avocados in a smoothie. Right, that so one. So a lot down. of people put um, bananas in their smoothie to provide that creamy texture. Um, the avocado does a great job of providing a little bit of healthy fats, a little less carb con content if you're looking for that. But it just provides a nice creaminess to it. Excellent. I tell you what, this has been awesome. This is great. Are there any other questions that came in? We have two more questions. Oh, two more minutes. Great. So let's uh, talk a little bit more about Mex One Coastal Cantina. You yeah. know, so if, if I'm coming in, you know, what are some of the great specials you guys offer? Do you have specials or you? Yes. Yeah, so the number one thing people come in for is the bang and shrimp taco. That bang and shrimp. Those are good. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Fried shrimp. Um, we use wild caught shrimp, uh, a little spicy sauce, a little sweet sauce. It just goes so well together. But, you know, obviously people love our nachos, our queso. It's just delicious. Today is National Guacamole Day. Um, Sunday is National Queso Day. Um, and Come in Sunday, National yeah. Queso, and a great queso. We are actually doing free queso for everyone on National Queso Day. Yeah, I mean, come on. I haven't officially announced that. It's going out now on Instagram now we tomorrow. Know. It's now it's now live. It's, everybody knows, but yeah, on Sunday, National Queso Day, free queso for everybody. It's going to be awesome. a lot of queso. Yeah, we appreciate around. you guys doing this with us. You know, yeah. this is our our first virtual event, Coastal Cantina, Mix One Coastal Cantina. Been a Charleston's Choice winner for many, many years, and we definitely appreciate this. Absolutely wonderful. Any other questions, send them in. Uh, this is going to be recorded, so go to charlestonpostandcourier.com forward slash virtual events and check us out. Yeah, Thank and you can so also much. reach us on um, Instagram or Facebook. You can direct message us if you like um, with any follow-up questions anybody has. I know there's going to be a follow-up email, so we can send anything out, but um, if not. Cheers. Cheers, brother. Cheers to you. Cheers to you yeah. all. All right.